Are you an artist or a small business owner struggling to connect with your core audience? Well, today may be your lucky day. I'm Jay Think Eo of Think Eo Marketing, and our free marketing consultations are back. Last time we opened up our free consultations, we connected and helped so many artists and entrepreneurs that we want to help even more this go round. Our consultations cater to artists and small business owners with dreams of taking their vision to the next level. So if this interests you, then simply fill out the contact form attached to this video and let's connect. Until then, just think ill. How have you been since the last time we linked up? Man, great, bro. I can't even say terrible shit, you know, just making it, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, life shit happening, you know, you just got to get that thing in order. But other than that, I'm super straight, bro. I want to say you, the last time, oh, no, nah, the last time you hit, you didn't drop the brand yet. You ain't dropped the clothing uh, yet. Uh, so so speak on that, because I see you yeah, rocking. Yeah, I had to. I'm like, yeah, I got to come up here repping, you feel me? So, um, basically, uh, this my uh this my new brand uh Berry Bones, <coughs> excuse me, Berry Bones, um, shit I got I got Berry to go, going across the uh going across the chest eagle on there you know with the prey at the bottom you feel me, so <laughs> what I said I wanted to do with it was just you know like make it a a, a luxury street brand you know what I'm saying so man I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Keep pushing it out there, bro, because I got a lot of stuff going. But, you know, I, I'm like, I got to bring my babies back out, man. You know, I got so much hands on, you yeah. know. <laughs> How long did it take you from to go from idea to actual product? Um, Honestly, bro, like I got I got so many ideas in my head, you know, and it'd be like sometimes it don't always come out like exactly how I want it, you know, yeah. but. Um, I'll probably go through like maybe three, four designs, maybe, you know, but once I get that design down, it's over with. Like I go straight, straight to printing it up. You feel me? These are, uh, DTG, direct the garment. You know what I mean? So like I said, it's um, cross, cross promo. You feel me? How? Okay. Because a lot of people, you know, like we, we all influenced by something. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And you say you want to start a luxury clothing brand. Yeah. So what was what actually influenced you to say I want to do that? Honestly, bro, like <clears throat> I, I was looking at like how everybody in a, in, a, in the city they they had they have uh, like graphic t shirts and all of that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But like everybody, it, I want to say it looked cheesy, but like nobody was really like giving that that luxury look to it. You see what I'm detail. saying? You feel me? So um, I'm like, I, I, that, that's something that I want to step into, bro. You know, I be into the fashion, but I never pop that high, how I feel like I should. So I'm like, what other way to do it besides, you know, doing it myself? You know what I mean? So um, actually, like, the whole idea of it, like, I got it from, like, uh, Ed Hardy, bro. Ed Hardy used to be, like, one of my favorite Facts. designers, bro. You feel me? That's my favorite clothing brand. brand so... It was like me looking at that, and like going back on old pictures. Like, man, this used to be my favorite hoodie. You know, like when Wayne and Jewels came with the Air Hardy, I'm like, ooh, the boys going crazy. They was popping that shit with the BB Simon belts back then, bro. Yeah. You know, ahead of the wave, the Bape, all that. You feel me? So Alexander McQueen, all that shit, bro. You feel me? So, um, just seeing, just seeing that, and you know what I'm saying, just wanting to be that that guy. You know what I mean? Like you got. You got Virgil, you feel me? Yeah, he he doing it, but Virgil really he started with the street well, like as a you know, as a as a on on a lower level, and then he took it took it up there. You feel me? Yeah. You know, he was doing Pyrex before Off White came about. You know what I mean? So for that to be uh like one of those one of those brands that was like on some streetwear type shit and it went up there with the Supremes and all of that type of shit. Like they gave me a lot of motivation to do that too, bro. Now, before you ever jumped into the clothing, you are a producer. You yeah. feel me now? Mm -hmm. Charlemagne said he named the I wanna say four or five most most influential rappers ever. You feel me? He kept Chief Keith off that list. 
And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he he was trending for like four days after that because the world was telling him how influential Chief Keith was. Right. So to be one of those those people at the forefront of, of drill music, how do you feel when you you see UK drill and New York drill and all these other drill artists that to me were birthed from Chicago? Yeah. Um. It made me feel good for sure. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's a it's kind of like a uh. It's, I was about to say a love hate thing, but it's, it's it's no hate at all. But it's like my homie DJ L, you know he he the originator of that of that sound right then and there. You feel me like that that UK New York type shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like to see that hit sound went global like that, and they mimicking his sound and they just so popping off of it, and he not really reaping the benefits. It's kind of like. Like, it's a little sticky situation for me, but I love that shit, though, bro, you feel me? Because other people, you know, we gave other people, you know what I'm saying, a way to live on with they, with they shit, you feel me? Like, we laid down the foundation, we did the drill shit, you feel me? But that specific sound, that's, bro, like, you know, what yeah. the New York, what the New York motherfuckers doing, they just sped it up. Like, they took the shit from uh, UK, sped it up, they doing all type of dances and shit. Like, I seen, uh, I seen Yellow speaking on that shit earlier, bro. I don't, I don't, I feel what he's saying, bro, but at the end of the day, we gotta think about it like this. Like, the older motherfuckers was looking at us, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, this drill shit, this shit ain't from the last, this shit, woo, woo, that, they talking about this, woo, woo, that shit finna be gone. Look what, look what it did. Changed the whole game up, bro. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Like, how producers was talking about niggas with, uh, niggas that was making their beats on Fruity Loops, how they can just click shit in. They was hating on that type of shit, bro. Then when niggas started getting billboard placements and, you know, real plaques off that shit, it was like, damn, like, we, we need to go work with these little niggas, you know what I'm saying? Thanks. So it's all about evolution, though, bro. Everything, we, we ain't gonna be, we ain't gonna be all for everything that's, that's, that's happening right now. Like, I can't get, I can't, Get yeah, with TikTok, bro. Like <laughs> me either, bro. I can't get with that shit, bro. Like you feel me? That shit is crazy. You know what's funny? When our, our parents used to play the music and they will listen to the music we were playing, they be like, "Man, what are you listening to?" I'm the yeah. same way now. My son oh, and my daughter, they get to playing some shit. I'm like, "How do you even find this?" Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I take it all in, though, bro. Like my 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 daughters, bro. Like. Both of them, you know, they 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 both into music. You know, they got their own little sounds or whatever, you know. But uh, they they both be on TikTok real heavy. Like my daughter Arby, she be bringing me a lot of different shit, bro. Like you feel me? Like, and the shit be actually decent, bro. I'm like, okay. So you know, they bring the how they bring it to me. They kind of like on some and not type shit. Like, alright, daddy, listen to this one. You it make a beat like this, you know? And I'm like, damn, this shit like really sweeping the the. The whole Instagram, Facebook. They keep you connected. Shit. Yeah, bro. You feel me? And I'm just like, this a whole new sound, but this a sound that was started in Chicago. You feel me? Like, all of the TikTok famous songs is like dance drill, bro. Like, this shit is crazy. Diddy also said that R&B was dead. Now, me personally, I, I, I never been really huge on the R&B side. But I know when I hear good R&B music, yeah. you feel me? And I ask, um, damn, I want to say I, I put it on Facebook or something. I'm like, man, somebody put me in tune with some R&B, you know what I'm saying? My man sent me 150 songs, all fire, bro. Dang. So how, because I feel like rappers are now harmonizing on some R&B shit, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So with your daughters putting you on, on new sounds and new things, like, is it hard to... to go from being a hip-hop producer to an R&B producer? Or mm -hmm. was that already in you? Yeah, that was already in me, bro. I ain't gonna stunt. Like, that's all I've been locked in on, bro. You feel me? Like, R&B, like, that's the round of town where I really get in my R&B bag. You know what I'm saying? Like, I started, who who was the first artist? Uh, I feel like I tried to do it with KD Young Cocky before. Um, we had did a few little joints, but I don't think they made it to the tape. Then uh, I did some shit with Neil. Um, Bro, I'm going to tell you again, that was my <laughs> shit, bro. That was my shit, bro. You feel bro. me, Neil Gang, Black Snow, you feel me? That that was a, you know, all of them joints played played a role in, you know, developing my sound as well, you know, with the R&B shit, you know what I mean? So, um, like, right now, I'm locked in with, a, with an artist named Julian, bro. Nigga, raw as fuck, bro, you feel me? 
he'll R and B, he'll R and B singer too. You know what I mean? The nigga write, he 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 go in, coach you, all that type of shit, bro. You feel me? So, um, I feel like I feel like R and B though, like how he said it's dead. He probably saying like it's dead because it's not too many people that's trying to do it. You know what I'm saying? They trying to do it, but they trying to be tough. You see what I'm saying? I was just speaking on that shit the other day, bro. Like all the R and B artists trying to do the shit that rappers doing. Like, bro, go back to the to the baby making shit party. Oh, you feel me? You know what I mean? So it's like everybody trying to follow the wave. It's just like when Chief Keef came out. You got these grown ass niggas rocking, like how Chief Keef rocking in the videos and all that shit. Like, bro, stick to your sound. That ain't the lane for you. Talk to the women. You know what I'm saying? Like, R and B motherfuckers, talk to the women, bro. You ain't gotta run around here with thirty poppers and all this extra ass shit, bro. You feel me? I seen the uh, uh, nigga. I don't know if he. I don't know if he rap or R and B, but he was on TikTok, bro, and he was remixing songs, bro. And he he was singing about that thirty. I'm like, this shit cold. <laughs> you feel me? Because he was going crazy. Yeah. I ain't even gonna lie. You yeah. feel me? But I get what you're saying, bro. man. Because. A lot of artists, to me, like you got to fit a particular mold nowadays, and that's what social media is. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Now, with you being so connected with artists, like, is it hard to find an artist out here, like a, a good quality artist? Nah, honestly, bro. When I just moved to the A, bro, I swear to you on everything I love, bro. Like, the artist that my friend Ruby, she went on a spree of just inboxing hella artists, bro. I'm talking about. Every art, I ain't gonna say every artist because it was some trash shit in that too, though. But for the <laughs> most part, everybody who like she put towards me, I'm damn like the Atlanta artist lit, bro. Like, I ain't gonna cap with you. Like, they sound, sound like, like they developed already. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's not really so much as like you gotta step in and do this and do that. You know what I mean? Like, opposed to Chicago where. You know, motherfuckers don't know what what sound they want to go for, what look they want to go for. You know what I'm saying? Like, in Chicago, that shit just heavy, bro. Like, niggas don't listen. Then they, you might see the 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 next motherfucking artist popping, so you want to go over there to what what him and they they crew doing and all that type of shit. You feel me? And I want to say it's hard to find an artist, but it's hard to find a loyal artist, bro. I can say that. You know what I mean? Like a motherfucker that's really like locked in, you know, like I've been trying to lock in with motherfuckers, you feel me? Like, cause once we get that sound, it's over with. 